Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing some of the most important and frequently asked questions from complete denture topic. This will be just first part of few other question paper discussion that has been planned. So let's begin now. The most frequently asked question that I came across was balanced occlusion. When you have to write an answer on balanced occlusion, we start with the definition bilateral simultaneous anterior and posterior contact of teeth. That is the definition and you have to write according to which GPT that was. Second will be the characteristics of balanced occlusion, how the teeth are going to contact in protrusive and the lateral excursive movements. Why balanced occlusion in CD? Primarily to increase the stability of the dentures, the types of balanced occlusion being bilateral balance, unilateral balance and monoplane concept. Coming to the concepts of balanced occlusion, what you see here is the Hanau's concept and according to Hanau, there are five components of Hanau, basically the condylar guidance, incisal guidance, cuspal inclination, plane of occlusion and compensating curves. Then once the Hanau squint ha are explained, you have to write about the trapezonos concept and the Boucher's concept in brief, that is more than enough. And once after this, we have to write in brief about monoplane and lingualized occlusion. So in monoplane occlusion, both the maxilla and the mandibular teeth will be non-anatomic. Whereas in lingualized occlusion, the maxillary palatal cusp will be in contact with the mandibular teeth, which is a monoplane teeth. So that is, this is the mandibular teeth which is monoplane or zero degree teeth whereas this is the maxillary teeth which will be anatomic or semi-anatomic with its palatal cusp contacting the central fossa all right moving on to articulator articulator is one of the most common questions that comes for long essays we have given a detailed description on understanding the concepts of an articulator but if you have to frame an answer you will be writing the answer for articulator based upon its uh, definition its purpose wh where is it being used what are the minimum and the additional requirements its advantages and disadvantages and the broad classification based on theories of occlusion based on the simulation ability to simulate the tmj and based on its adjustability so this is what is expected when a question is asked on a next is the dentogenic concept dentogenic concept is also called as the spa concept which is nothing but sex personality and age and since it is called as spa it will be the teeth selection will be done in this same order first you will be selecting teeth based on the sex next it will be based on the personality and the last will be based on the age of the patient now this diagram would be helpful to understand the SPA concept. Here as you can see, first is the sex. If it is a feminine, you will be going for slightly rounded teeth and if it is masculine, it is going to be more flat and sharp. Next, based upon the personality, if it is vigorous, it is going to be sharp and if it is weak or gentle, you are going to have a rounded appearance okay so that is based on personality and the last being age young patients are going to be having slight amount of mammalons and aged patients will be having some amount of attrition so this is the basic concept and if you can imbibe this concept you have to you can and you will be able to write an answer based on these four headings these four headings should suffice an answer for dentogenic concept the centric relation very common very easy to understand and to when you have to frame an answer your answer is going to be under the following headings first is the definition why do we need centric relation what are the methods of retruding mandible and when you try to retrude the mandible what are the difficulties that you will be facing and finally what are the different methods and description of each of the methods physical physiological methods is when you ask the patient to tap continuously functional methods includes needle house mayerson um, uh, needle needle house patterson and uh, mayerson's technique graphic is intraoral and extraoral techniques and the radiographic methods so these are the methods and the headings under which an answer is going to be framed for centric relation moving on to phase bow very easy topic 
we will be discussing about facebook separately in a different video but if an answer has to be written for facebook the headings under which the answer will be framed are first is the orientation jaw relation which is nothing but the orientation of the maxilla with respect to terminal hinge axis what are the parts of the face bow and what are the types of the face bow so arbitrary face bow can be earpiece type or fascia type and kinematic face bow is the other type and in kinematic face bow the bite fork will be attached to the mandibular occlusal rim so if you write this much this is more than enough but do, please don't forget to draw the diagram for any question where you can draw a diagram because it is going to fetch you more marks for that answer all right so the next is vertical jaw relation this is a very broad question if a question comes on vertical jaw relation you have to write about vertical jaw relation at rest vertical jaw relation at occlusion and what are the effects of increasing or decreasing the vertical jaw relation so if let's say that if a question is just formed on vertical jaw relation you will be writing its definition what are the factors affecting the vertical jaw relation what is the importance what is how are you going to obtain the vertical dimension at rest so we most commonly use speech or phonetics we will be asking the patient to say m or s m sounds mostly and the patient will be taking the mandible into a physiological rest position so that is the basic concept and if you are able to write an answer based on these headings it will be sufficient to vertical dimension at occlusion so occlusion is basically when the patient is going to bite into maximum intercuspation so you will be writing what is definition or the introduction to video and what are the methods to record video so there are mechanical methods based on ridge relations pre extraction records and previous dentures it is a boon to have a previous denture when you want to determine the vertical dimension from occlusion and physiological methods are going to be phonetics aesthetics swallowing threshold and tactile sense so tactile sense basically means the comfort of the patient now when we use what technique we use to obtain vertical dimension at occlusion is nisvonger's technique and nisvonger's technique is a physiological technique okay so physiological method is what is being used now immediate denture is a very common question slightly confusing to understand at the undergraduate level but don't worry there will be a separate video soon based on uh, completely focused on immediate dentures now immediate denture concept is basically when a patient comes with a completely dilapidated dentition like this like absolutely no teeth there is no possibility of you doing anything but to extract the teeth but let's say that the patient wants a denture on the day of the extraction so in that case what you will be doing is you will be doing something called as an immediate denture for this patient so immediate denture is nothing but fabrication of the denture and insertion of the denture on the same day of extraction all right so there is a sequence that you have to follow that sequence has been put under this treatment procedure but if you have to write an answer as a long essay you will be writing the definition you will be giving a short introduction as i just explained you will be writing what is an interim immediate denture we do not follow interim immediate denture so it is just going to be for a completion purpose what are the advantages and the disadvantages the primary disadvantage that has to be written even if you forget anything else is that the high yield concept is that anterior trien anterior trien is absolutely not possible so you cannot determine how the aesthetics or the final outcome is going to be in the patient's mouth you will be able to do the teeth arrangement as you can see over here you will be able to do the teeth arrangement for the anterior teeth in the lab but like a conventional denture where after the teeth arrangement you will be taking for a trien is not possible in a immediate denture okay so you have to do you have to keep in mind the indications and the contra indications for immediate denture and once these things are kept in mind you can proceed and write the treatment procedure or the steps that are involved and please please don't forget to draw a diagram for an immediate denture it will fetch you good marks the next question are this is a this is a moderate or a short essay question the limiting structures in the mandibular arch now i'll be these are the limiting structures in the mandibular arch there is nothing more to this 
and what is expected out of this is you write the names of them and you tell why it is called as a limiting structure let's say for labial frenum labial frenum is a active muscle containing the depressor anguli oris so the labial frenum has to be relieved because it is containing a muscle inside it so it is a active frenum all right so labial vestibule is a limiting structure why because the labial vestibule is where the denture flange is going to be positioned and anything that is going to put pressure in the vestibule vestibule being a small narrow area can distort the denture all right so the buccal frenum also contains muscle attachments of the buccinator muscle so that is why this has to be relieved the lingual frenum again contains the lingual frenum is attached to the genial tubercles and to the tongue on the ventral aspect so in this case all you have to do is relieve or otherwise the denture is going to be distorted and it is going to lack retention alveolingual sulcus it is a broad topic in itself it is a s shaped portion s shaped portion from anterior to posterior if this is the anterior portion and if this is the posterior portion there is an attachment of the myeloid ridge here so it is an s shaped curve and there will be a separate video discussing the concepts of alveolingual sulcus posteriorly the limiting structure is going to be the retromolar pad we all know that no teeth arrangement should exceed beyond anterior two thirds of the retromolar pad all right so that will be the posterior limiting structure and pterygo mandibular raphe is an internal structure that is going to be present on the lateral throat form so we don't need to get into the details of pterygo mandibular raphe so the limiting structures in the mandibular arch you will be enlisting what are the limiting structures and you will be writing one to two points under each heading so that will suffice and that will be a good answer when this question is asked the asked as a short so when a question on posterior teeth selection is asked i have seen this question for both short essays and long essays the way we want to frame your answer is first you have to write it under the heading size of the teeth and next will be the form of the teeth so you can select posterior teeth based upon its size or based upon its form if you look at the size you have a three dimensional size so it will be buccolingual width mesiodistal and occluso gingival width so occluso gingival width mesiodistal width and buccolingual width is how you will be writing your answer and these headings will be one or two sentences under these headings will be enough when you write a uh, answer based on the form of the teeth we have three forms one is the anatomic semi anatomic and monoplane teeth anatomic teeth is when your cuspal inclinations are steep and at, at an angle of 33 degrees semi anatomic teeth are slightly shallower and they are at an angle of 20 degrees and last is your monoplane teeth where there is absolutely no cuspal inclination and it is very flat in nature so it is almost 0 degrees of cuspal inclination and under, under these headings anatomic semi anatomic and monoplane teeth you will be writing their advantages and disadvantages so that will be your final answer and that is how we will be expected to write an answer based on posterior teeth selection coming to this topic combination syndrome combination syndrome is basically when a patient presents to you with completely intact mandibular anterior teeth against a completely edentulous maxilla so in, in this patient you will be giving a maxillary complete denture and a mandibular removable partial denture so why is this of particular significance this is because of the sequence of events that is happening inside the mouth when a patient presents to you in this condition so first what you will be seeing is the extrusion of the lower anterior teeth because there is no opposing teeth in the maxilla when this teeth extrudes it is going to put pressure on this region so there will be bone resorption in the anterior maxilla then it is simultaneously characterized by downward growth of the tuberosities and when this happens you can see that the occlusal plane becomes canted because of this there will be more pressure in the posterior mandible which will result in posterior mandibular bone resorption when a patient wears a denture in such condition and there are so much of events happening inside there will be papillary hyperplasia in the palate so this is the sequence that is happening and this is the most important uh, key answer that is expected in this question if you remember these five key points or the five cornerstones you will be able to write the sequence in correct order 
uh, and uh, one more thing is that this combination syndrome was given by kelly so it is also called as kelly syndrome so you will be either asked a question as combination syndrome or kelly syndrome so please don't get confused and finally when you write the answer you will be writing the treatment planning in treatment planning you will be writing the rationale as to why do you want to proceed with such kind of a condition or is it viable to write all right and if you decide that you want to go ahead with this condition you will be taking or what all systemic and dental factors you will be taking into consideration before you fabricate the denture so that is what is that is what will give the completeness to this question so the difference between arcon and a non arcon articulator is very simple in an arcon articulator the condyle is attached to the lower member and the articulating fossa or the articulating surface is attached to the upper member so this this type of articulator is going to simulate the exact way in which our joint is present but in a non arcon articulator as you can see over here the condyle element will be attached to the upper member and the articulating surface will be attached to the lower member so this is exactly opposite of how it is present in the human being so that is why this is called as non arcon articulator and the term arcon articulator was given by bergstrom so that is another the high value point so this is the difference between arcon and non arcon articulator so coming to the last question for discussion today impression techniques in complete denture please don't confuse with the impression techniques in fixed partial denture so when a question is asked on the impressions in cd you will be writing about the objectives of impression making mucostatic mucocompressive and selective pressure technique so the objectives of impression making the mnemonic is press p r e s s which is p for preservation of residual alveolar ridge R for retention, E for aesthetics, S for support, and S for stability. So, the mucocompressive technique was first given by Richardson and Henry Page. The picture depicts a mucocompressive impression where all the tissues are functionally loaded. They are in their functional position. Mucostatic is when this this diagram which shows an impression made using alginate. So. the tissues are in their anatomical form that is the basic concept and finally the selective pressure technique is this impression where you see pressure is being applied on the portions which can take pressure so that is going to be functional capacity and there are certain structures which are relieved and they are recorded in their anatomic form so selective pressure is going to be a combination of both mucocompressive and mucostatic technique so you will be writing about the philosophy what the what the technique uh, depicts the indications the contraindications and the materials used for each technique so that will complete this question and that's it for this video thank you